have to do is something called pacing and leading the audience. We're gonna pace and lead the audience, so here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna start in kinesthetic. We're gonna walk out and connect from a feeling base with the audience. We're gonna start kinesthetic because the kinesthetic people are gonna go, oh man, I really like this presenter. The auditory people are gonna go, and, eh? Could you speak up a little? The visual people haven't even noticed it started, so everything is fine. And then we're gonna start with kinesthetic and then we're gonna warm up and we're gonna warm up but the kinesthetic people will come along for the ride once we've got rapport with them. And then we're gonna warm up into a more auditory, a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more cadence, a little more delivery. And the, and the kinesthetic people are gonna come on up and then the auditory people are gonna go, hey, I really like this person. This is a great presenter. And the kinesthetic people are going, yeah, I told you, right? Visual people, they're still waiting for it to start. That's okay, because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna build a crescendo. You're gonna be giving their talk and the visual people are not really in yet, but you're gonna build it up and up and up and then suddenly you're gonna say something amazing and you're gonna inspire them and the visual people are gonna go, I love this! And the auditory people are going, yeah, it's cool. And the kinesthetic people are gonna go, I told you. Because you paced and led, you established rapport at each level of the audience and you brought them along the journey. Now it's important, you don't just stay there. You don't just do that ramp up once. You still gotta take them on a bit of a roller coaster, but if you can take them through that emotional ride, you can hold them for as long as you like. I have workshops where I'm on stage for 10 to 12 hours for four or five days in a row, and the audience complain because I don't give them enough breaks to go to the toilet because they don't wanna give up in the middle of my presentation and go to the bathroom. I had teachers where I invented going to the bathroom so I could escape their presentations, didn't you? This will change everything about the way you present to an audience. It will change everything about the way the audience perceives you. It is extremely powerful. And incidentally, it has a name. It's called the charisma pattern. That launch has a charisma pattern. And that is to start soft, warm up, heat up, it's called the charisma pattern, and I want you to notice something. Any of the truly great orators in the history of the world use this pattern, unconsciously I imagine, because I'm not sure somebody had taught it to them, they just did it unconsciously, it just came to them, but they did. You see, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King doesn't walk out there and he goes, I've seen the promised land. He doesn't start like that. He says, I'm not worried about any man. I'm not fearing any man because I have been allowed to go up to the promised land. I've been allowed to go up to the mountaintop and I've seen the promised land. And he takes them on that journey. Same thing in his have a, I have a dream speech. I even had somebody, and this is a little dark, but I even had somebody come to me and say, what about Adolf Hitler? He was a great speaker. First of all, let's be really clear. I'm not advocating anything that he was about. What I'm saying is the stage effect is an incredibly powerful force and it can be used for good or evil. But the reason people bring him up so often is because the videos you see of him are, ah, yeah, 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 and he's yelling and he's shouting. But if you watch the whole talk, which you never really see in media clips, what you're gonna see is that he started off here and he warmed up there and he took them there. And once he'd worked them into a fervor, he could get them to do ungodly things. You can use that same magic, you can use that same power to create influence in any area of life that you want to. If, whether you want to use it to attract new business, new clients, maybe you want to use it for recruiting the right partners, joint ventures, uh, uh, investors, employees. Maybe you want to use it to, to, to forward a cause. Maybe you want to run for political office. I can tell you right now, right now, more than any other skill, Authentic presentation is what will win you an election.